Hello, I'm Michelle Neal, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Theatre Show, your window into Australian theatre. Well, on the back of a tremendous episode showcasing Love Never Dies, which is Andrew Lloyd Webber's sequel to The Phantom, we take you back to the grassroots of a new Australian fringe theatre showcasing Tooth of Crime, a new production by up-and-coming director David Harmon. But before we do that, let's take a look at what else is on in Australia this week. Playing at Sutherland Musical School of Arts from the 10th to the 19th of June is Little Women, performed by Miranda Musical Society and directed by Tim Dennis. Based on Louisa May Alcott's own family experiences, Little Women follows the adventures of Joe, Meg, Beth and Amy March as they grow up in Civil War America. And continuing on with the precedent of delivering acclaimed international productions, Sydney Theatre Company brings us Terminus, an astonishing show from Ireland's iconic Abbey Theatre, following the lives of three people who are ripped from their daily lives and catapulted into chaos. Terminus by Mark Rowe is playing in the Drama Theatre of the Sydney Opera House until the 9th of July. In the spotlight this week, we focus on Tooth of Crime, Sam Shepard's dark and throbbing rock and roll murder play, which raises the roof with its bass-driven rock, violent musical styles, and incendiary writing. Our presenter, Tim Rotsford, visited the cast and crew at Sydney's ATYP Studio One in Walsh Bay. Let's take a look now. Tonight I'm at the ATYP Theatre at Walsh Bay for the Sam Shepard play, Tooth of Crime, a story set in futuristic wasteland America where two rock gods fight it out for fame and power. This whole play really is about um, revolution, insurgency and war for. It's about a brutal tyrants and downtrodden gypsies and the ways in which the gypsies will uprise and overthrow the tyrants and then become the tyrants themselves to be overthrown by another force. You've got to go beyond confidence, beyond loathing and just kill with the eyes. That's it. That's better. How does it feel? Paralyzing. That'll change it. The power will shift to the other side. Feel it? No, oh, can I blink now? Yeah, give me a rest. Arcas Armand, you look fantastic. Tell us about your character. Uh, right, so I play um, a character called Hoss. Host is what's described as a star marker in this wasteland apocalyptic version of, uh, of America that, uh, that Sam Shepard's written for us. Over the course of the play, he uh, develops an increasing sense of paranoia that there is um, someone on, on their way, a gypsy killer, intent on toppling his regime and his control over, over this, this environment that he rules. Suck ass! I had you clean! And stop walking like that! That's not the way you walk. <laughs> That's the way I walk. So when you first come out on stage, yeah. what does the audience see? Hopefully um, the audience meets a man who is not right in the head, who is a little schizophrenic, in some ways represents death, but in other ways represents that kind of glamour that you see in people like Bowie and Lady Gaga. He's the complete opposite of Hoss. What he does want from Hoss are the things that Hoss has achieved and the status that Hoss has achieved. And the only way to get that is to remove Hoss. Crow has come to take down Hoss. As he says, his send is to lay him cold, call out a referee and fight to the death using microphones and words and music. The King Water is back. Serpentine suit. Here. The outcome of the fight, well, you have to come and see the show. You've heard it from David Harmon, a very good reason to come along and see 
tooths of crime. So if you are willing to surrender to a sensory experience over a sense of meaning or import, there's a lot to like in this offering from a group of very promising young Sydney ciders. Tooth of Crime is on from the 2nd to the 25th of June. Ticketing details are on our website. This week in Theatrecraft, Valentino and Dominic are back to take us through the final installment of Auditioning Tips and Tricks, showing us how to avoid the common pitfalls in your audition. Take it away, gentlemen. Hello and welcome to Theatrecraft. This week is the final of our three-part series on the audition process. Again, we have with us Dominic Stone, director of the Newtown Acting School, to help us understand how to avoid the pitfalls during an audition. What do we need to know, Dom? Well, rather than talking about it, let's do it. Great idea. Okay, let's take it from the top. So let's imagine we're at an audition. Okay, Valentina. Oh, sorry I'm late. Uh, uh, my printer broke and uh, uh, I haven't brought my script okay, and... Uh, straight away. Many actors start an audition by apologising or by being frantic. What you need to do is find your centre. Come on again. I uh, apologise for being late. I'm ready to do my piece now. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, let's take it from the top. Today I'm doing Sergeant Simmons from The Removalist by David Williams. Don't be so bloody stupid! Okay. Stop you away. Another classic mistake is actors introduce the piece, they introduce themselves and they just start the piece. It's really critical that you turn away, take a moment, breathe, focus on your intention, turn back, start the piece. That way you're creating a piece of theatre for the auditioners. Don't be so bloody stupid! What about the bruises and the blood? How are you going to explain that? Many auditioners will hand you a piece of text that you're unfamiliar with to test your ability to deal with text you don't know. It's called a cold read. Hmm? Don't be so bloody stupid. Okay, what I'll, about stop, the I'll stop you again. A pitfall here is uh, Valentino has buried his head in the script. You can't see him performing as an actor. So a great tip is look at the line, read the first part and deliver the second part. Don't be so bloody stupid. What about the bruises in the blood? How are you going to explain that? I've been in the force now for 23 years, Ross, and I know what you can do and what you can't do. Right. So even though Valentino is reading, in inverted commas, we're still seeing his performance. Okay, that's about it really. A final tip I would say to actors is make sure what you're wearing is appropriate and flatters you. For example, what you're wearing is smart but casual. Thank you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed and gained some valuable information from our series on the audition process. Over to you, Michelle. Thank you, gentlemen. Once again, great and useful advice for anyone going through the audition process. Next week, we take a look at a very interesting new form of experiential theatre, bailout. What happens when 40 executives are locked up and treated like criminals for hours on end in a real prison? So we're going to take away from you your individuality, your personality, everything you know about yourself. We're going to crumble it to dust. <laughs> Bailout is an annual charity event in Sydney and Melbourne for the White Lion Foundation. Find out how the executives handle their experience next week. Well, that's it for this week, folks. A big thank you to the cast and crew of Tooth of Crime, along with our fabulous presenters, Tim Valentino and Dominic. If you like what we do here at The Theatre Show, let us know. You'll find us via our website or Facebook page, and don't forget to share us with your friends. I'm Michelle Neal, and I'll see you at The Theatre.